Hello friends. Welcome to the another video tutorial from KT's Life Science and this is the second lectures of human reproduction. In this video we are going to talk about a very important topic that is structure of testis and the process of spermatogenesis. But before that if you have not subscribed my channel yet, then subscribe it, and press the bell icon to get notifications of my upcoming video lectures. Okay. So, without wasting time let's get started. In previous lecture, we have discussed the primary and secondary sex organs. As we all know, the testes are directly involved in the process of spermatogenesis. So it is known as primary sex organ in male reproductive system. Now let's see the structure of testis. In this diagram, you can see the outer view of the testis along with the epididymis. Epididymis opens into convoluted tubules called vas deferens. Testicular arteries and veins are also observed in this diagram, which is helpful in testicular blood supply. In adults, each testis is oval in shape, with a length of about 4 to 5 cm, and a width of about 2 to 3 cm. Weight of each testis is nearly 14 grams. You can see the another diagram of testes along with the folded scrotum. Ductus deferens, spermatic cord, and epididymis. The outermost layer of the testes is known as tunica albuginea. In this diagram, you can see the cross section of testis, testicular lobules, reti testis, dictuli efferents, head of epididymis, tail of epididymis. And ductus deferens also can be seen in this diagram. Another cross section of testes is given over here. You can clearly see that the test is covered by three layers. First, the outermost layer, tunica vaginalis. Second, tunica albuginea. And, third, Tunica vasculosa, the testicular lobules formed from tunica albuginea. Each testicular lobules contain seminiferous tubules. The seminiferous tubules opens into reti testes through the tubuli recti. Reti testis opens into highly convoluted tubules known as epididymis through vas efferents. Epididymis is divided into three parts. The uppermost part is caput epididymis, or the head of the epididymis. The middle one is corpus epididymis, and the third part is corda epididymis, or the tail of the epididymis. Epididymis opens into vas deferens. The testis is covered by a dense covering called tunica albuginea. Each testis has about 200 to 250 compartments called testicular lobules. Each lobule contains 1 to 3 highly coiled seminiferous tubules, in which sperms are produced. Now, let's see the structure of seminiferous tubules. Each lobule of testes contains one to three highly coiled seminiferous tubules. Length of one seminiferous tubule is 70 cm. Each seminiferous tubule is lined on its inside by two types of cells called 
male germ cells or it's also known as spermatogonia and sertoli cells here and another beautiful diagram of the cross section of testes is given for the better understanding of its compartments and different tubules seminiferous tubules inside seminiferous tubules two types of cells are present first germinal cells called spermatogonia and second somatic cells called sertoli cells the male germ cells undergo meiotic divisions finally leading to sperm formation while sertoli cells provide nutrition to the germ cells the regions outside the seminiferous tubules called interstitial spaces contain small blood vessels and interstitial cells or leydig cells leydig cells synthesize and secrete testicular hormones called androgens This is the transverse section of testis. In this diagram, you can clearly see the seminiferous tubules containing spermatogonia and sertoli cells. Interstitial cells are present outside of the seminiferous tubules. In this diagram a single seminiferous tubule is given in this diagram you can observe the spermatogonia sertoli cells and the different stages of the process of spermatogenesis for better understanding More diagrams of seminiferous tubules are given over here. Please observe these diagrams carefully. In this diagram a section of seminiferous tubule is given in this diagram you can observe the interstitial cells the spermatogonia sertoli cells lumen of the seminiferous tubule and different stages of the process of spermatogenesis like primary spermatocytes secondary spermatocytes and spermatids We will discuss the process of spermatogenesis later. Now, let's discuss about the interstitial cells. The regions outside the seminiferous tubules called interstitial spaces contain small blood vessels and Interstitial cells or leydig cells. Leydig cells synthesize and secrete male sex hormones called androgens. Spermatogonia. Stem cells called spermatogonia. Singular is spermatogonium. develop from primordial germ cells that arise from the yolk sac these enter the testes during the fifth week of development in the embryonic testes the primordial germ cells differentiate into spermatogonia which remain dormant during childhood and actively begin producing sperm at puberty
Toward the lumen of the seminiferous tubule are layers of progressively more mature cells. In order of advancing maturity, these are primary spermatocytes, secondary spermatocytes, spermatids, and sperm cells. After a sperm cell has formed, it is released into the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. This process is known as spermiation. The plural terms are sperm and spermatozoa. The ploidy of spermatogonium and primary spermatocytes is 2N. Sertoli cells or sesentacular cells. These extend from basement membrane to lumen of tubule. These are also called nourishing cells. An enlarged view of a single Sertoli cell is given over here. Kindly observed it carefully. Function of Sertoli cells. It provide structural support, protection, metabolic requirement, oxygen, and nutrition to the developing sperm. These form blood testers barrier. Metabolic wastes product collection. It secrets androgen binding protein, inhibin, and malarian inhibiting substance. Please remember that Sertoli cells cannot divide in sexually mature testis. Androgen binding protein or ABP. It binds with androgens and maintain their high concentration inside seminiferous tubules. Inhibin. It has negative feedback effect with the follicle stimulating hormone or FSH of anterior pituitary malarian inhibiting substance or MIS. It causes regression of malarian ducts in male embryos. Now, let's understand blood testes barrier. Adjacent Sertoli cells are joined together by tight junction through their basal cytoplasmic processes over spermatogonia. These tight junctions form blood testes barrier. The blood testes barrier prevents entry of harmful substances from blood affecting developing sperms and, at the same time, preventing sperms related proteins to enter circulation. Tight junctions join neighboring Sertoli cells to one another and form an obstruction known as the blood testers barrier. Substances must first pass through the Sertoli cells before they can reach the developing sperm. This barrier prevents an immune response against the spermatogenic cell surface antigens, which are recognized as foreign by the immune system. Now let us discuss the most important topic in the terms of the exam. Spermatogenesis. It is process of formation of male gametes or sperms. It begins during puberty and continues till death. With advancing age, the number of sperms produced as well as quality of sperms reduces. In humans, this process takes 65 to 75 days. It can be divided into two stages. First, spermatocytogenesis. It is formation of spermatids from spermatogonia. Second, spermiogenesis or spermateliosis. It is differentiation of spermatids into sperms.
Spermatocytogenesis Spermatogonia multiply by mitotic division. Each spermatogonium is diploid and contains 46 chromosomes. Some of the spermatogonia called primary spermatocytes periodically undergo meiosis. A primary spermatocyte completes the first meiotic division leading to formation of two equal haploid cells called secondary spermatocytes which have only 23 chromosomes each. Secondary spermatocytes undergo second meiotic division to produce four equal haploid spermatids. Spermiogenesis or spermatiliosis. It is differentiation of spermatids into spermatozoa. After spermiogenesis, sperm heads become embedded in the Sertoli cells and are finally released from the seminiferous tubules by the process called spermiation. In the subsequent diagrams, you can see the process of spermatogenesis, and by which you can get a clear idea regarding this process. So, it is advised to observe all these diagrams carefully. Now, let's understand the endocrine or hormonal regulation of testicular function. Spermatogenesis starts at the age of puberty due to significant increase in the secretion of gonadotropin releasing hormone. The increased levels of gonadotropin releasing hormone then acts at the anterior pituitary gland and stimulates secretion of two gonadotropins luteinizing hormone LH and follicle stimulating hormone FSH. LH acts at the Leydig cells and stimulates synthesis and secretion of androgens, which, in turn, stimulate the process of spermatogenesis. FSH acts on the Sertoli cells and stimulates secretion of some factors which help in the process of spermiogenesis. In this slide, you can see the diagrammatic representation of hormonal regulations.
Don't forget to like, share and comment. Please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon to get notifications. Thank you for watching.